So you thinking about buying a condo or a home or selling a home or condo in Orange Beach or Gulf Shores or any of the surrounding areas? Well, today we're going to talk about RECAD. What RECAD means, it is, it's basically a form that tells you exactly how we could represent you or you could be represented by a real estate agent in a real estate transaction. It sounds like a bunch of boring stuff. We're hoping not to make it boring. So anyway, I have uh, basically brought in the expert, which is Aileen, and uh, we're gonna get to it and explain it to you right now. Hey guys, if it's your first time to the channel, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe button, and ring that little bell so you can be one of the first ones to learn everything there is to know about what it's like to actually live at the beach. My name is Andy Haas. This is Aileen Fountain. And our entire team, we do these videos just like this every single week just to be informative, just to let you know what it's like to live at the beach. So whether it's nine days, 90 days, or nine months until you're thinking about making that move or selling your current home or condo here at the beach um, or in the surrounding areas, don't hesitate to pick up that phone, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, set up a Zoom call. We'd love to talk to you. We get phone calls and texts and emails from people just like you every single day, and we absolutely love it. So as I mentioned today, we're going to talk about what's called RECAD. The state of Alabama requires that we discuss if, if someone comes to us and starts talking to us about representation, we have to tell them how we can represent them. So we thought we would try to make this uh, a short video mm -hmm. just to like, kind of tell you, well, you know, what we do with our clients. So I thought I'd just say, Aileen, so just say I am, I'm a YouTube client. I've been watching all your videos and I want to buy a $700,000 condo on the beach. So what's our first step? You know, what, what, what do you, what do you do for me? And what's the first step? Okay. Well, you know, RECAD is an important document, as Andy mentioned, uh, Alabama state law. And, and we are specifically talking about Alabama because it's a little different in uh, representations, a little different in Florida. So we're specifically speaking to the Alabama side here in this video. Um, but uh, Alabama law does require that uh, an agent goes over RECAD with you. And, and in that document, it explains the four different ways that you can be represented. Um, now, down here and everywhere that I know, anywhere I know, there's really only three main ways um, that anyone will represent you. Uh, if your agent's not going over RECAD with you, um, you, you, you want to ask about that. I've literally never written an offer um, or done a listing agreement without getting a RECAD signed. Um, it's not a requirement that you sign it, but it is a requirement that we present it to you. Um, we have to sign it and present it to you. So it, it is much appreciated um, that you do sign it because it, it shows that, that you have been recatted, if you will. That's what it's called. Um, so let's just talk about the different ways that you can be represented. So the first way is the most kind of obvious way is as a single agent. And being um, a single agent means that your fiduciary responsibility is just to you. Um, you see this a lot in, in the buying side of things. You, 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 know, you refer to it as a buyer's agent, if you will, but you can be a single agent for the seller or the buyer. And it just means that all your loyalty and you know, all your work is for this one person. You do what is in their best interest. Uh, you do have to be honest and truthful. It can't be one of those scenarios where, you know, a seller says, Aileen, I have covered up uh, this, this problem in my house. And if anyone asks you about it, I want you to lie to them. But we can't do that. Um, we can not disclose it, technically. Wouldn't want to do that. Um, but you can't lie. So anyway, you're still doing everything honestly and faithfully as the single agent. And this probably the most use that I do when I'm representing a buyer is I do want to be their buyer's agency. I do want to be their advocate, if you will. Well, Alabama is known as what's called a caveat emptor state, which means buyer beware. So it's up to the buyer of a property to find out all the things that are wrong with it. The seller has to disclose certain things that are hazardous or, or health issues, mm -hmm. like if it has asbestos or lead paint, or anything of that nature, they have to disclose it. 
But now there's certain things they don't have to disclose. Like if the seller knows for a fact that the air conditioner is on its last leg and it's about to go out, they don't have to tell you that. So that's up to you as a buyer to find out all this stuff. The, I had a teacher explain to me what single agency means as far as kind of putting it in layman's terms. It's kind of like if, if, if we are going up a set of stairs and to the third floor of a, of a condo or something, and if you are heading to go up there, I can either walk beside you or I can hold your hand while we're walking up those stairs or I can walk behind you and catch you if you fall. And, but, the, but the thing is with single agency, I'm holding your hand going up those stairs. I'm helping you walk the stairs. That's uh, what happens. Believe it or not, um, this might surprise people, but like let's say a house or property had flooded. They don't have to disclose that to you. Um, that's something that you would want to ask and find out uh, prior to purchase. So I just throwing that out there. So second, um, second way on the, on the actual form is called a sub agency. Uh, don't know anyone who uses sub agency in our area or any areas because that's not a way that we would ever represent you. But I'm going to move on to the next way that you can be represented and it's called a uh, dual agency. Uh, on the form, it says a limited consensual dual agent, uh, also known as dual agency. And that is happens a lot uh, if you have the listing and someone calls you off your sign or contacts you from online and wants to go see the property, you agree to go show it to them and then they decide they want to make an offer. At that point, you have to, and, and you know, and obviously you notify them right off the gate. Like this, this is my listing. Happy to go show it to you if you're not working with an, I already have a buyer's agent or working with another agent. You go show them the property and they want to make an offer. You have to notify the seller that your relationship with the seller is going to change and you let the buyer know like, and then you sign an extra document called a limited consensual dual agency form. That is a written document telling you that that single agent is representing both parties. Um, I will tell you if you're the buyer in limited consensual fiduciary responsibility is always to the seller in the state of Alabama does not mean you cannot represent the buyer as well in, a, in that limited uh, consensual form. Um, and then at that point, you really become a conduit, a conduit of information. The buyer, you don't go to the buyer and say, well, unless the seller tells you, you can say this. It, 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 that's the only caveat. You can't go, oh, well, I know for a fact the seller will take, you know, 450 for this property. So just write it up for 450 and I'll, I'll get it approved. Can't do that. Um, it would be one of those where here are the comps. What would you like to offer? Buyer says, well, I want to offer such and such, such and such. Okay, great. I'll write it up, present it to the seller, you go to the seller, talk to the seller about it. And then you don't say, hey, the buyer told me they would pay, you know, 50000 more. That that's That's not what you do in limited consensual. You literally become just a transfer of information back and forth. Um, you don't fully represent either party, but you do have some representation to both parties. And, um, you know, in that scenario, uh, you just have to be honest and ethical and, you know, make sure that you handle the transaction accordingly. Um, there also is another way on limited consensual. So like you and I both work for eXp Realty. So if, if I have a buyer and you have the listing and I come to you with a buyer and I say, Hey, Eileen, we're going to show your property. And then we bring an offer that is technically excellent limited point. Consensual. Excellent point. It, anytime it, you are working with an agent and they are showing you a listing from their brokerage, doesn't matter. You know, if it's, if it's a different brokerage, say it's a Remax brokerage and a Remax agent from that office shows it to you. That's, and you write an offer, they will have to disclose to you that's limited consensual dual agency. At EXP, we're not a franchise, we're one company. So anytime Andy and I show, doesn't have to be one of our team members or anything like that. Anytime we show you an EXP Realty property, um, that is considered limited consensual. Uh, and you would have to sign an extra form in that scenario. It happens all the time. It's nothing to be afraid of. Just want to explain that to you because the roles do change a bit. 
um, which leads me to the fourth way that you can be represented and that's as a transaction broker and as a transaction broker very similar to that dual agency in 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 the regard that you you really are just a conduit of information you can go out and show properties no problem anything that's a public record you can tell the buyer or the seller the difference is when the buyer comes to you and says what should i offer on this property you can't say oh well i would offer five hundred thousand we can easily negotiate this down 50 grand in that scenario you would say well here are the comps and then you tell me what you would like to offer so the relationship is just more you're more of an order taker than you are a you know advice giver well this is the way i would would break that in down. in the scenario that i was talking about with you walking up a, set, a flight of stairs in the single agency part of it we're holding your hand as we go up the stairs in the transaction brokerage part of it we're still walking up the stairs with you we're just standing behind you in case you fall and in, and in the absence of a uh, actual buyer's agency uh, signed, if you do not have a buyer's agency um, signed with that person, you are acting by default as a transaction broker. And that's for buyer or seller until you have an actual agency relationship formed through a buyer's agency or through a listing agreement. And that's important because we're going to get into buyer's agency later in some of our other videos. So we'll have to explain exactly what that is. But if you pick up the phone and give us a call, we'll explain it to you right now. Um, <laughs> but essentially a recap is a very simple form. It's one page. It's not intimidating. It's not a contract. It's, there's, it, it's just all it is doing is explaining the different ways that you can be represented. Um, and that's, that's really it. So it's yeah. simple form. It is, we do, we do have to go over it by law with you. So that's why we're, we're going over it here in this video. Cause it is an important thing, um, to, to know and to go over. So, yep. And that is going to about do it. We just that's wanted it. to do a quick video explaining the recap portion of it. And, um, listen again, if first time to the channel, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe button and ring that little bell. So you could learn everything there is to know about what it's like to live at the beach, the beach life. Uh, be sure and watch some of our other videos and look forward to us doing um, some buyer's agency, explaining some of the other forms. We're going to go over some of that stuff because I think it's real important to know. So, but at any rate, be sure and watch some of our other videos. And until next time, hope to see you around town. Hope to see you around town.